What's the deal with salt? Salt is a common ingredient that we use in cooking, in food production, and is still used as a preservative for food, as it has been for centuries. Salt is actually needed in our diet, but evidence suggests that it's not something many of us are deficient in, with the average adult in the UK consuming over 40% more than the recommended intake. My name is Elle and I'm a registered dietitian and fellow lover of salty chips. In this video, we're going to take a look at what salt is, why we need it, but also why it's important that we aim to stick to the recommended guidelines. First up, let's settle a common query. What is the difference between salt and sodium? Salt is what we have on our shakers on the table and is chemically made up of two elements, sodium and chloride. So sodium is the dietary mineral and is one of the chemicals found in salt. Sodium is found naturally in some foods, like vegetables, meat and dairy products, and seafood. Sodium is also added to foods during manufacturing, either to enhance taste or as a preservative. When we read labels, manufacturers may list sodium content rather than salt content, so it is important to know that each one gram of sodium equates to 2.5 grams of salt. Now that we have that cleared, why do we need sodium? Sodium is an important mineral for supporting our body's functioning. Sodium helps the body to maintain an optimal balance of fluid and also plays a key role in nerve and muscle functions. Sodium is particularly important for those who are active because sodium, alongside other electrolytes, can be lost through sweat. Sodium plays a key role in maintaining hydration levels as it helps to deliver water to the body's cells, which is crucial to minimize dehydration during periods of activity. This means that diets low in sodium can increase the risk of dehydration. But sodium also plays a vital role in the rehydration process. Drinking water alone can cause a rapid fall in plasma sodium concentration and decreases aldosterone and vasopressin production, all of which increase urine output. The addition of sodium to ingested fluids maintains vasopressin levels and prevents this diuretic effect which is one of the reasons why sodium is almost always found in sports drinks. Regardless of whether you're an athlete or not, excessive sweating or even periods of vomiting and diarrhea can lead to low sodium levels in the body if we are replacing fluid but not sodium. Taking an electrolyte supplement can be beneficial following periods of being ill or exercising. In addition to maintaining hydration levels, sodium also helps with nerve and muscle function. Sodium plays a role in nerve impulse transmission, which is essential for the communication between nerves and muscles. When sodium levels fall too low, this can result in muscle cramps and may impair performance. Some studies have highlighted that muscle cramps are more common in those who lose more sodium or have higher sweat rates, although the research in this area is limited. While sodium is an important part of our diet, particularly for those who are active, consuming too much of it can have negative impacts on our health. One of the biggest complications that can occur from having too much sodium in our diet is high blood pressure, which is also known as hypertension. When we consume too much sodium, our body will retain water to try and balance the sodium levels within our bloodstream. This increase in blood volume can put a strain on our heart and on our blood vessels. Over time, the extra work and pressure can stiffen blood vessels, leading to high blood pressure, which increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. High blood pressure is considered the leading cause of cardiovascular disease, with it accounting for two thirds of all strokes and half of heart disease. High blood pressure is also a common cause of chronic kidney disease, or CKD. A diet high in sodium can also increase the risk of kidney stones, as it increases the amount of calcium lost in urine, which can cause kidney stones to develop. There is also emerging evidence that high levels of sodium may be linked to stomach cancer, known as gastric cancer. Several studies have found a link between high sodium diets and risk of stomach cancer. The reasons for this are not clear though, and more research is needed. Remember, association does not mean causation. So, we know that there are risks associated with a high sodium diet, and I know you might be thinking, but I don't add very much salt to my food. But even without you adding salt to your foods, you could still have a high sodium intake because a lot of the sodium that we consume comes from processed foods even the ones that might not even taste salty. Processed foods get a bad rep and the word processed foods might make you think of deli meat, pastries and ready meals. But most of the food that we eat is processed to some degree. Bread, breakfast cereals, cheese and even frozen vegetables are considered processed foods. Some of the most nutritious foods have been processed in some form and it's important that we don't go labeling these foods as bad or cutting them out of our diet entirely. However, it can be helpful to be aware what foods are typically higher in sodium. And if your diet is high in these, simple swaps like choosing a lower sodium option or an unsalted version can help to lower your intake of sodium. Foods traditionally high in sodium include smoked or cured fish and meats like chorizo, bacon and ham, savory snacks like crisps, popcorn and nuts, 
cheese, and sauces like ketchup and soy sauce. Salt can act as a preservative, and so things which have a longer shelf life, like canned legumes or vegetables, tinned soup and sauces in a jar, typically have a higher sodium level. Six grams of salt per day, which equates to 2.4 grams of sodium, is the recommended limit for anyone over 11 years old. But national food surveys show that most of us exceed this. Making things from scratch at home is one way to reduce our sodium intake, although this isn't always feasible for so many reasons. However, you can flavor your foods at home using herbs and spices instead of adding salt. I get it though, the idea of my homemade chips not being quite as salty as I like doesn't sit quite well with me. This is one of the biggest barriers to reducing our salt intake. Things just don't taste quite the same. But what is interesting to know is that our taste buds do adapt over time and the preference for salty foods can decrease. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.